sticks out from the last Ebola outbreak as being quite remarkable. And that is of Dr. Ameo Stella Adedina. We can actually pinpoint the actions of this one doctor who single-handedly prevented the spread of Ebola into Lagos, the most densely populated city in Africa. During the course of her Monday morning ward round, her team presented a patient who had collapsed at the airport on his way in from Liberia. He was due to go to a meeting of the Economic Community of West African States, which had, no doubt, representatives from all over Western Africa. She was told he had malaria. But this diagnosis did not satisfy her. Although she had never seen anyone with Ebola, and the patient denied being in contact with anyone who had the disease, she arranged for him to be tested and contained with the limited resources available to her. Despite no confirmed diagnosis, Dr. Adedeva maintained her conviction whilst under continued pressure from Liberian government officials and the, patient who, and the patient who threatened to charge her with kidnapping and violation of human rights. Her conviction cost her her life, but saved the lives of countless others. As a doctor, I aspire to have her strength and resolve if ever faced with such a situation. And I'm sure many of you wish you had a bit of Dr. Adedeva in you. So I would like to dedicate this day to her and the many other healthcare workers who have selflessly lost their lives caring for others in quarantine. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for a great welcome and uh, start to the symposium which Angus has set up along with the help of other people. I'm Christopher Gardner Thorpe. I'm a neurologist from Exeter. I'm president of the other faculty, as uh, Christina has mentioned, and I happen to be the course organiser for the history course, working alongside my friend and colleague Andrew Papanikitas, sitting here, who runs the philosophy course. So together we run two courses. Uh, I'm not needing to say very much. We're going to go straight into uh, the, the work that we're going to talk about. And first of all, I'm going to ask the Master Apothecary, Professor Charles Mackworth Young, to speak to us about the apothecaries and a little bit perhaps about the city, just for a few moments, following which there's going to be um, a, a poem which Angus has organized, which will be shown on the screen. But I'll come back to that in a moment. Master. Christina, thank you both very much indeed, and welcome to everyone here. So I'm Charles Macbeth Young, I'm, I'm the Master of the Society this year. Um, and we are actually absolutely thrilled as a society to have these two faculties, and it's wonderful to have them working together for this uh, really very interesting and fascinating day, and I, 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 I think all of the talks are going to be really interesting. We are here in Apothecary's Hall, and the reason why we are here in this hall has something to do with quarantine. Um, you will all know, and of course you're going to be hearing from Herbass Marshall Ruth Zunda about plague in the 17th century. And the um, great plague that afflicted London in 1666 was absolutely devastating. So devastating uh, that many, uh, many people and indeed doctors knew that um, they to, saved their own lives, they needed to get out of London. And so the physicians fled. And actually, that's not really a, a very good moment in physician's history, including the two physicians who ran Bart's Hospital just up the road. But the apothecaries did not. The apothecaries stayed and looked after the sick, and actually did much of the work uh, the physicians would have done. Um, so giving medicines, prescribing medicines, holding hands of dying people, dealing with their corpses. 
That's what the apothecaries did. And, um, they're rather proud of that. Many apothecaries died in the process. But those who survived actually did make a little bit of money out of this. So the next year, <laughs> there was a terrible great fire of London and it destroyed this hall. They had a little bit of money to rebuild it. The fire came, took to two days of great cross London, got, got here, burnt down the existing hall on this site. But the apothecaries miraculously had enough money to rebuild, and, they re and this is what they built. And it opened in 1672, and just after the Great Fire, we were the first uh, to open, and miraculously we survived the Second World War. There was a bomb down the park pile of chimney which failed to go off. Brave firefighters on the roof chucked off on centuries. And so here we are in the oldest living hall in the city of London. Um, so in a sense, it's thanks to the physician's rather selfish observation of quarantine that we are here. Um, and the society itself is actually a little bit older than we were founded, as Christina said, 400 years ago, um, uh, 1617. So we're still celebrating our 400th anniversary. And throughout those 400 years, we have um, done all the good things that we uh, were set up to do. Regulation of trade, setting standards, education, charity, looking after our members. And this hall is used for all of those things. People take exams in here, probably some of you have taken exams in here. Um, we have dinners, we have meetings, uh, various other um, assemblies, um, including symposia and such as this. Um, and it, it is a real, real pleasure to um, have you here um, and to sort of take part in something which is very city focused, but is also a national organisation um, and one that is very concerned with education um, and, and training. So um, I hope you enjoy today. I thank you all very much. Well, thank you very much, Master. Um, It'd be nice to have an opportunity to talk to you later, but I know you have to be at some point during the symposium. So we move on now to a poem which is going to be shown uh, from the screen. Angus, I think, is going to do the IT, which would be good. Um, this is uh, a poem that uh, is highly relevant. It relates to Ebola, and it's by Aki Lassisi. Now, uh, Aki Lassisi, I'm told, is very well known in Nigeria that he's the editor of Nigeria's main newspaper, and that he's a composer, comedian, teacher, journalist, and award-winning poet. Uh, Angus found him uh, by, by uh, searching some, something that would be appropriate to symposium, and has now got to know him. Uh, unfortunately, he can't be here today, but Angus, shall we watch? Even if the road to the cemetery is closed. For Dr. Stella Ameyo Adadevo. Even if the road to the cemetery is closed. We will bury our heroine in the hearth of songs. What would Soya tell her? If they happened to meet at the other end. When he was rushed in from the brinks of death. She spread her arms and heart to save his life, not knowing that in his clouded mind an untouchable virus was feigning calm. Even if the road to the cemetery is closed, we shall bury our heroine in the hearth of songs. We do not want to sing ill of the dead. But the confession bequeathed to the hair is smelling death. So the sages are always right. When he said the death that will kill a hunter lives in the quiver, the one that kills the farmer is hiding in a ridge. No matter how smart a swimmer is, his death may be hiding in a swimming pool. But even if the road to the cemetery is closed, we shall bury our heroine in the hearth of sons. In fulfillment of our Hippocratic oath, 
Our heroine has stemmed the tide of many deaths, healing husbands. She delivered their wives of bouncing joys. She had nurtured their children with gentle drugs. But this tricky night, the water is spilled and the girl is split. But even if the road to the cemetery is closed, we will bury our heroine in the hearth of songs. And what manner of a plague is this that kills the herbalists to spite the sick? Even in the days of small pox, we offered sacrifices to the dreaded God. But all of a sudden, a virus gets so bloated it snatches bush meat from our frozen mouths. For the first time in many moons, the world is scared of its own sweat. Friendly hands refuse to shake. Loving hearts decline to hug. Even my neighboring brethren are serving communion from a Catholic distance. But even if the road to the cemetery is closed, I we must bury our heroine in the hearth of songs. Ebola warned us long enough, but we were first asleep on our usual bed, so that when it finally came, it met our Solomon's bereft of sense. Ame your humanity is built by your gallant death. His book mourns and Twitter sobs. We know your cause deserves a soulful kiss, but we are held at bay by the killer's scourge. Your casket should be decked with a million blooms, but we are forbidden from gathering for a national ride. But even if the road to the cemetery is closed, we shall bury our heroine in the earth of songs. <laughs>